how we see ourselves in relation to the world around us, something akin to a revolution. We're, we're seeing a crisis, says Jonathan Porritt, of seeing of a worldview. What's needed to underpin any technological change or any act action or activism in the face of climate change is a revolution in, in seeing. The former Archbishop of, Can Archbishop of Canterbury, um, Rowan Williams, uh, speaks of our current worldview as treating the universe as a giant warehouse of stuff there for our convenience, rather than seeing ourselves as part of the whole community of creation, living in relation to the mystery of God. Or the poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning in the 19th century put it rather more simply, his her little verse, earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush of fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes the rest of us sit around and pluck blackberries. What do we see? What do we see? It's, it's a question which is posed to the prophets, isn't it? Um, Jeremiah, what do you see, Jeremiah? An almond tree in blossom. What do you see, Amos? A basket of summer fruit, um, a, a plumb line. And they see through those creatures, things, things happening in the world, they see the deeper meaning, the deeper significance. And I would suggest that the problem is that we, we don't see, we don't, we've lost the ability to see the world around us and ourselves actually in, in any depth. The, the Franciscan uh, scholar and theologian of the 13th century, St. Bonaventure, he, he said that the, the fundamental sin, the fundamental sin of humanity is inattention inattention to one another, especially to the poor and the marginalized, inattention to the creation and as anything other than a giant warehouse of stuff, and inattention to the mystery of the loving presence at the heart of creation. The basic human sin is inattention. And it springs a bit particularly, or it's been emphasized a bit particularly, I think, in enlightenment thinking going back to the 17th century, uh, when the, re the, the French philosopher René Descartes um, put the individual right at the center of the scientific method. The individual is at the center and observes every creature as a distinct object there to be observed and then used. He, he, Descartes speaks of mastering and ha harnessing the natural world for our own well-being and enjoyment. I think the term we use of natural resources is, a very, is significant, isn't it? Um, resources, natural resources, who for? For, for ourselves to be, to, be, um, to be used, to be abused, to be exploited, to be owned, to be possessed, fought over, developed, and so on. But it's, 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 all, it's all about us, about us. We become blind to the world as anything as other than about us. And I think there are particular um, uh, uh, reasons in our contemporary culture, in our where we are today, for this blindness. And I'd just like to identify three of them. Um, one is our, our busyness. <laughs> we, we live in a 24-7 culture, trying to fit more and more and more in. Um, and that prevents us from actually paying attention to what's what's before us. I, I had an example of this last week. I was down in Devon staying with friends and uh, uh, I, they asked me if I could um, saw, um, saw through their wood pile or their, for, their, for their stove. And I set about this with a, the bow saw and was rather enjoying it when some people who live opposite came across to me and said, oh, we could lend you our electric saw if you like. Uh, and I said, oh, well, actually, thanks very much, but I'm actually quite enjoying this. And they said, but it would get it done much quicker. And I said, but I've got all the time in my hands. I'm, I'm very happy doing this. And actually there's something with a bow saw when you're cutting wood. Um, 
you can you can tell the difference by the feel of the saw the sort of wood you're cutting through whether it's oak or ash or cedar or whatever um uh but actually that's such a from our contemporary worldview wants to get through something as quickly as possible in order to get on to the next thing to do. Um, and I suppose, you know, our fast food business, our convenience food business is all about that, isn't it? It's about getting something done quickly so we can move on to something else. But we lose that sense of attention to paying attention to what's before us. A second example of this um, a contemporary culture, this lack of attention, I think is, is in, well, how superficial we are, our seeing often is. I was, for, I spent a time out in Africa, in Zimbabwe, and we were living as a community of brothers in a township on the edge of Harare. And we used to get European travelers, visit tourists coming to stay with us, normally because we were very cheap in comparison with hotels. And they would come and stay with us for a few days and they would do all the sort of touristy things. They would spend a few days white water rafting on the Zambezi at the Vic Falls. Or they would go and they would visit a safari park um, uh, in an in a air conditioned um, uh, mini, mini bus. And they would uh, also visit an African visit village and see some dancing. And then they would move on to the next place for the next stop along Africa. And there's a sense that, you know, they've come to see Africa, but they don't actually see it. They don't actually pay attention because it needs, it needs staying where you are. It needs actually long, long, long looking. And the, the whole tourist industry is a bit like that. It, it pays superficial attention. You don't actually see the world from the decks of a cruise liner. Um, you, 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 you pay a whistle stop tour and then you, you move on. And then lastly, I suppose what we're doing now, of course, is an example of, uh, of the, the problems of attention we have. I mean, the virtual world, we inhabit a virtual world in which we're overwhelmed with images. Um, when we flick through our screens from one thing to another, to another. We, we live through our, through our phones or through our laptop screens or our, or, or our iPads. And I'm not knocking technology per se, because uh, after all, we're only having this conference, this meeting this morning, because we are using this technology. It's a great blessing. But I can't actually get to know you through a screen. We can't actually engage with each other deeply through a screen when we need actually physical presence to know and to appreciate those sort of slight subtle changes and, and um, uh, person of personality um, uh, and we actually we become distanced by the technology I like many of you perhaps were wonderfully sort of impressed have been wonderfully impressed by David Attenborough's um, filming um, Planet Earth and and and, and others um, wonderful wonderful pictures uh, which open up the world to us but Actually, do they draw us closer to it? I wish that David Attenborough had actually shown us the wonders in our backyard or on our balcony or in our small garden. Because actually that's where, that's where we really actually appreciate the world around us. The virtual work prevent us from, from seeing what, what is real. And what I want to suggest to you in, a, in an exercise um, for a sort of a, for, for, for 20 minutes, quarter, for quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, is an exercise in, in paying attention, paying attention through our senses. Um, I call it a walk of thanksgiving and praise, um, using our five senses. And I, I, it won't be enough time to use all five senses. I, in fact, it would be good if you just stay with one. But take some time to simply as, a, as individuals, and then maybe sharing in your group, in your breakout sessions, take time, first of all, or for instance, to use this sense of sight. Um, 
look around you. I don't know whether you can actually go outside at the moment. <laughs> uh, it might, if it's probably raining with you, um, it's about to rain with us. No, it has started raining with us. Um, uh, but, you know, just look around the room and notice what you see. I, I, I have the privilege of walking once a month with a friend, Bob Gilbert, who's a naturalist and a, uh, a writer and a broadcaster. And he shows me around, we walk, just walk around East London. And what he shows me aren't the sort of wonderful nature parks um, around us or even the beautiful sort of, you know, uh, urban parks. He shows me the weeds in the pavement. And he tells me the story of the weeds in the pavement because they're precious, they have a story, they have a life. Um, take time, rest the eye on what you see. It's said that the tribes of the Amazonian rainforest pay such attention to the rainforest and what's going on that they can, they can notice even the slightest change, even the arrival of an early migrating, migrating bird will tell them something about what's going on in the rainforest. So take, a, take time to see and then give thanks. Or likewise, use the sense of sound. Listen, listen to what is just around you. The noises, the noises in the house, the noises in the garden, the noises from outside. One of the things I've noticed, one of the things about the lockdown um, in March, and it looks as though we're going to have another one, is as actually the quietness. We didn't have the first aircraft normally comes across our house at uh, quarter to five in the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for, for some months that was complete, you know, I noticed it was stopped. And going out and down in Devon last week, oh, this was the silence I noticed. Absorb it, absorb the sounds, the, the subtle sounds and give thanks. Or for instance, um, the, 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 the sense of touch. One of the things we I really regret in the present pandemic is that is, is, is the lack of personal contact with others, the lack an inability to hug or even shake hands or to give the peace in church. Um, we're blessed here in the house with, with our, where I live with, with five other brothers and five refugees. We're blessed also with, uh, with Joker, our, our wonderful um, um, multi-species dog, um, who is, you know, well, you can hug the dog, wonderful. Um, but take, take time to notice the wind, the rain, the texture, uh, the texture of things, uh, even materials around the house and give thanks. Or then the sense of smell, um, breathe in. The one, it's one of the, it's a sign of, 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 the, of, the, of the disease, isn't it? Of the, of the virus, of the loss of smell. Um, but take time to just notice the subtle changes of smell. I, I love that bit in, uh, in Genesis where Isaac and or Jacob has come to uh, Isaac and pretending to be his brother, brother Esau in order to gain his father's blessing. And he puts on Isaac's coat and Isaac can identify him by the smell the smell of the countryside in Isaac's coat. He, he believes it's, it, 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 it's his son Esau. Um, smell the earth, smell the rain on the ground. I, near the house where I live in London is, the, uh, is, the, is, the, is a lovely walking area called the Greenway, which reaches right down from central London down to, down to the Thames at Beckton. It's actually over the East London sewage outlet and uh, in the summer, you can smell it too. Um, but you know, you notice the smell. It's it's important. It smells not not all smells are pleasant, but notice what they are, um, and give thanks. And then, of course, the sense of taste, um, uh, the great gift of food. Uh, uh, in the Barking Road near us, or just around the corner from us, uh, in the st space of one mile, there are the food outlets of 19 different nationali nationalities and wonderful smells and tastes down that stretch of road. And uh, a friend of mine occasionally takes me out to a South Indian restaurant with the most wonderful subtle tastes um, there. 
we we've you know there's a blandness about so much food that is produced for us because it's produced for convenience for for speed um learn to savor and give thanks and maybe a little bit of the exercise you could do in this time would be just to take a cup or a glass of water and taste the water it has a taste or, or a bar of chocolate and eat it slowly um well, you know, those are th five little examples of ways we can pay attention through our senses. And I don't know how quite how you're going to do this in this in this uh, in this next 20 minutes. And if we can come back at 20 to 12. But what I'd like you to do is to, to try and experience one or more of those, share a little bit and then feed back something of what you've learned from that exercise, from that paying attention.